right now with the college chocolate boy. You know, I was opening up and shit, doing college tours. When I came out with late registration, I was allowed to uh, be an opening act for an arena show. You know? And it was an amazing experience. Then one Coachella, I went to go see Daft Punk, right? And they just took tour to a whole nother level and I reached out to, you know, the people that work with them and I used the people I work with, you know, they're doing tours for, tours with. And then we created Go in the Dark. When I did late registration, me and 50 Cent, you know, we were the two biggest rap acts in the world. And I had to open up for the arena act. And now in 2013, there was three rap tours sold out at one time. Drake, Jay-Z, and Yeezus. And what I'm trying to say is, y'all might go to likes and shit like, Las Vegas and see some motherfucking lights off, fast and all that shit. That ain't what this is. This is like well thought out. This is art. This is art. This is rock business shit. You know, I know it's improper etiquette, you know, to call myself a genius and shit, you know what I'm saying? That'd be like, uh, like a really beautiful girl be like, oh, I'm so pretty. You'd be like, we know, motherfucker. <laughs> but see, why I do that is because if you look at everything on every, like, motherfucking newspaper, you know, when you walk through the airport or anything that, like, these, these writers put up, you know what I'm saying, all this... Yo, chill with the smoke. I can hear that shit. Chill with the smoke. Boom momentum with the smoke. Uh, when they call me a rapper, you know, they don't do it to, to say it like, like they respecting us in our times, like, like the poets. You know, like, It ain't like they respecting what we did lyrically. Think about, you know, the moments where it was literally like me, Eminem, Wayne, and Drake all on the same record. Hey, sidebar, you keep on talking about Drake and shit, and I'm gonna tell you what it is and what it is in the magazines. They always be trying to pit niggas against each other, and that ain't going down no more. So tonight, it ain't none of that. We love Drake. We love every motherfucker that put their heart to this motherfucking music. If anything, we gonna go after motherfuckers right in that negativity. And because before they print some shit like that, they need to check with me and him and see if it's okay before they get ran up in their motherfucking office. It only costs 250 to beat your ass. <laughs> it only costs 250 to beat your ass. Side. So the reason why I do that, all that genius shit I be talking is because they'll try to write you out the history books. They try to say that aliens made the motherfucking pyramids. 
and not the nose on the sphinx. But when I look around and I look at all these tours and shit, it seems like rap motherfuckers selling the most tours and shit. So wouldn't it seem like every rapper is a genius? To put the words together, to relate to exactly what we're going through today and to make that motherfucking music that you feel and you play a high motherfucking volume. But when they say rapper, what they're doing is they're picturing an interchangeable nigga with some gold chains on and a red leather jacket. That's somebody that was raised by two educators. The first female black chair of the English Department at Chicago State University. They say the rapper, Kanye West. When they say the rapper, they're not saying that to say it's the person who designed this shit. It's not saying it to say it's the person that gave you 10 years So every media outlet, I don't care who you are, TMZ, E, Barbara Walters, don't play yourself. Respect it as such. SNL, all you writers, Lauren Michael, respect it as such. Because when we stand in face to face, you know who you're looking at. But you know you see me as a Gemini creative in 2014. You know you're looking in the face of Miles Davis. You know you're looking in the face of Lauryn Hill. You know you're looking in the face of Pop. You know you're looking in the face of Biggie. You know you're looking in the face of Prince. You know you're looking in the face of Missy. You know you're looking in the face of every Gemini creative. And this ain't no motherfucking spook. So play this shit back at your motherfucking meetings when you're writing your jokes. Play this shit back when you're writing your headlines for your tabloids. And then go to your little guitar and shit. Play that song that almost made it. Then play Jesus Walks. Then write that motherfucking headline where you try to make me look like a maniac or an animal because you're afraid of interracial relationships. Because you're afraid of the future. Because you're afraid of a rap that was raised by two educated parents. I came from the south side of Chicago. And don't think that I'm upset because I'm actually very, very happy. You know, uh, the idea that those Yeezys sold out in 11 minutes. Yeah, that's good for my ego. That's good for my ego. But the problem is, it's a 20,000 of y'all. So you know what? That's not good. For my people, for my people, for my people, for my people, for my people. And the reason why I made the decision between Adidas and Nike is because Adidas said I can make more product for more people. I'm not here to be some type of Novelty that you put in the glass box so you can say you're the company that released the Yeezys and then can't nobody get them so you get them fake ass all red and everything else that you drop. You be seeing that shit, you be like, fuck it, I'm gonna get the Jordan Park 800s and shit. I can't get the Yeezys. At least they all red. 
from a distance, or if I'm in a club and it's real dark, this girl gonna think I got on the Yeezys, but... And you know, the reason why I speak directly to Tim Cook, directly to Eric Smith, directly to Mark Parker, is because I got a microphone and I can. And I know I can. And I know I can. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Mark Parker, you're the head of Nike. I bet you everybody in your corporation will hear this tomorrow. It's going to be all on